course. One match tonight up at Carrara involving the Magpie. Brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, BP Car Care, Westpac, CUB, McEwen's, Vulcan Heating and Gas Winter Clearance. today one of the traditional clashes in football it's Melbourne against Collingwood at the MCG a battle to stay in the race for the finals and a battle between two outstanding forwards who in the last three weeks have produced magic Peter Dacos and Alan Jakovic and we go out to Waverley to see Carlton who at their last start defeated Geelong in an upset against St Kilda hoping to win coming off a bye to stay in the running for the top six Yes, good evening and welcome to AFL Today, the big game of the MCG, a packed house, 50,000 there today to see those two teams, Melbourne against Collingwood. It was billed as a clash between two traditional rivals and between two great forwards in Alan Jakovic and Peter Dacos. The first half was tremendous, it did produce a little bit of magic from both those players, Jakovic and Dacos. Drop punt, Spalding and Kelly, Persisco at the back, Dyson, Shaw, Viney, Jakovic in the pocket, it's his first touch, left foot, good kick, look at this, a goal, is it? Unbelievable! To Francis, Dacos, well done Hobbs, Dacos, don't tell me, don't tell me yes! Well, anything Alan Jakovic can do, I can do as well. Yes, it was magic, wasn't it? Dacos and Jakovic. It was 6-3 to 6-8 at halftime. A wonderful first half. Third quarter was going to be all critical as we go to the bounce of the ball. Working with me there today, Peter McKenna and Ross Glendinning. Start of the second half. Melbourne and Collingwood with everything to play for here. Viney and Francis with a bit of a shove. Manson beat Steins. Stasevic. Tony Shaw. Gee, Jay Viney could have been kicking in danger and is. Stasevich sweeps a handball to Krasiska. Not a good handball. Put him under great pressure. Phoebe off the ground. Missed by Kelly. On the up by Clark to Sporting. Jakovic on a lead. Beautiful pass. Superb pass, wasn't it? And great play by Viney to charge down that kick too. Fantastic work. Three goals to Jakovic. Won't be easy, Bruce. He's got a kick from a fairly muddy patch there around the 50 metre mark. It's yes. quite deceiving that ground. It's, it is shifting underfoot. A lot of players have slipped over in that first half. Well, this would be the perfect start for Melbourne. And he's kicked it beautifully for a goal. He continues to surprise this man. And here's Viney and Francis and the two Viney boys. And Clark and now the other Viney boys with Kerrison, and whilst that's going on, the scoreboard, this is a goal for Jakovic, and Melbourne in front. Yes, well, Jay Viney's got the job of tagging uh, Francis, and that's why there's a bit of uh, antagonism between those two players. And did the book come out, or didn't it? Hard to say, I think it might have come out earlier on in the day. Well, the emergency umpire was out on the ground as the bounce takes place. Steins, did he pop one across the head? No. Gavin Brown, can't get his boot to it. Ooh, a wild indiscriminate kick again. Oh, Spalding setting Melbourne alight again. To the half forward line, Jakovic at the back. Well done, Ronnie McEwen. Winter crashes his way through the back. A good tackle on Gaper. Jamie Turner gets it to Tony Shaw. Shaw goes to ground. He was caught high, the umpire said. Yes, and Mance is in trouble in the middle of the ground. He hurt his shoulder when he clashed with Steins. Oh, the gutsy little Collingwood oh, captain. Yes. That's the second time he's shown great courage there. Well, he did early in the game. He really does put his body on the line and uh, over the shoulder by yeah, Winter, actually. Now, Tony Shaw to centre wing. Up they go. Manson couldn't take the mark. It hits the deck. It's all Melbourne. Now, Collingwood. Tobani intercepts. 
strong play, Todd Miney. Around the corner he goes to the half-forward line and players race after it, but it beats Jamie Turner and Simon Oshold over the line. Scoreboard shows Melbourne leading by a point. In a thriller at the MCG. Both teams have made late charges towards the six after suffering slumps in the middle of the season. Spooled in court by Starcevich. Francis with a left footer. Brown and Lyon, two of the great players in the game. Make that a third great player in Steins to Gary Lyon. Clever. Got real vision, Lyon, to find Jay Viney. High drop punt, Spalding and Kelly. Kerrison at the back. Free kick to Kelly. He's over the shoulder. Kelly from half back. Manson now works for him. Kelly kicks it in his direction. Steins will come across with Bryce. Gary Lyon. His importance is growing as the game goes on. Kelly should take it and does comfortably. Jason Kroll warming up too, Bruce. Kelly with a little chip to Stasevich. Stasevich at half back. Gets it on to Turner. Turner the short one. He's found Malone. Is that 50? It's not. Darren Malone playing at half forward. Brett Lovett has done a fair job on Malone actually. Malone centre of the ground. He's looking for an option. Oh, taking plenty of time. Oh, wobbly kick to the half forward line allows Stretch to take a mark. And that was not good play. You can't expect to get penetration with one step on your kick. There's a penetrating kick himself uh, to the half forward line. Good play by Kelly. He's doing well in this corner. As he took that mark. Oh, he's played on. He's gone for the short one. It's a bad kick. Lyon is there. He's got backup support from Stretch. Stretch, he played for the free kick. Umpire didn't fall for it. Good umpiring. Here's Steins. It'll be a bounce at half forward for Collingwood. In attack, Stephen Stretch. Kennedy and Russo, the umpires. Here's Yates. Left foot to the space. Lehman hoping to get it before it rolls out and unable to. So Collingwood within a point of Melbourne after Jakovic kicked the first goal of the second half. Ten kicks for Lehman. Manson, Shaw and Steins. Steins gets it out. Manson with a big long handball, but to the space. Here's Bryce. Didn't sit for him, but he had time. Viney gave it up. Francis, round the body. Dacos. As you said there, Bruce, Viney knew that he'd given it away untidily there, indiscriminately as he did. And Dacos almost beat three players there. The ball falling between three Melbourne players with him in front gave himself the opportunity well he and Jakovic have gone goal for goal today Dacos with three Jakovic four and you back Dacos from here every time and he's put it through four to Dacos Collingwood back in front at seven eight to seven three and that's 66 for the season for Peter Dacos and his last four or five weeks have been outstanding to see this marking and in front Yates couldn't get there and Obst almost stumbled I think uh, as he went to take off a very deliberate and accurate kick there from Dacos. Collingwood by five points. It was Jay Viney for the half forward line. Clark versus Kerrison. Clark with the pace and kicks it over the line at half forward in front of the Melbourne members stand. One-eyed stand, and they're witnessing a very, very tight game of football. The Ruck Jewels here at half-forward will be taken by Spalding and Stasevich. Two normal half-forwards. Stasevich in front grabs it. Gets it to Shaw. Too high, that tackle. And it's a free kick to Gavin Francisco at half-back. Francisco. Now he's going short, and he's found Craig Stasevich. Not good marking by Melbourne. Stasevich, he's looking for the short one as well. It's a lollipop to the half-forward line. With no mark, Melbourne have got the loose ball. Kicked off the side of the boot by Dyson. Here's Grinter. Grinter with a long, sweeping hand pass. Guess who's there? It's Jimmy Steins looking for Jakovic. Jakovic at the back will come. It's a loose ball. It's a free kick against Jakovic for pushing the back. All he did was use his body. I couldn't see that one myself. Neither could I. 
free kick to McEwen. He had two to beat, but let's have a look. Oh, that's yeah. not a free kick. Just... <laughs> McEwen looks for Mullane. Stein's back there and wins it again and plays on quickly with a little one. Spalding at the 50 metre mark. I'm sure that Jack, getting back there, Jackovic won. Ross, did you think it was just body? It was, I mean, that's part of the game, but you've got to use your body. Spalding with a high one. A magnificent kick. Touched on the line. A booming left foot by Spalding. 7-4 seven, to 7-8. Seven, he either kicks magnificently or absolute shockers, doesn't he, Earl Spalding? Wouldn't want to back him uh, from 40 metres out straight in front, but that one almost. Stasevich working for uh, McEwen. Ronnie taking his time. Well, this is interesting. Kelly's going to be outnumbered, but takes the mark. Paid, he's got paid the, not the mark, but a free kick down for us. Yes. Fire indicating held by the Guernsey. John Russo doing that. Here's Kerrison. Centre half forward. Manson also outnumbered. Stein seems to be everywhere again. Morwood. He's had a quiet one. Good play, Morwood. Mullane. Left foot. Is this a goal? It is. <laughs> Mullane stretches Collingwood's leader. It's 8 8 to 7 4. Build a vehicle of power and refinement requires great perseverance. Here is a car for those who admire similar qualities. between Australia and Japan. The new Virada V6. Please consider. Make tracks into your nearest gas and fuel showroom. It's the gas winter clearance. And prices have taken a tumble. As you can be Just tell her that you love her Make sure you're thinking of BP her BP Disco 2000 Plus Because your car is more than just a machine BP On the move Take good care When you first buy a home You don't really own very much of it, do you? But if you have a Westpac home loan You can own more of your home much sooner. You can reduce the term of your loan without increasing the amount of your repayments. You can even vary your loan at any time to suit your changing circumstances. Just talk to your Westpac branch about these and other ways you can own your home sooner. You can bank on us. Never before did a road tire owe so much to a race tire. Directional Ducaro from Goodwood. The Magpies have stretched the lead to 10 points. The centre bounce vitally important. Steins will take it. Hand pass. Tingay to the half forward line. Turner, is that a free kick? Yes, it is. So it's a free kick. Going the way of Jamie Turner. A couple of indiscriminate free kicks given away by Melbourne. Jamie Turner. They really uh, take their time kicking the ball, Collingwood. To the half-forward line of Packer players. Bryce at the back. It's thumped to the deck. There's Stephen Stretch with a quick kick to the centre of the ground. It favours Simon Eichold. He's got backup support from Tingay. Tingay to the half-forward line. Earl Spalding. Can he play on? He's got an open goal. He chipped it into Djakovic who wasn't looking. Still a chance, Djakovic. 
Gets round on the left foot. Now on the right. Alan Jakovic kicks across goal and puts it out in the full, but Earl Spalding should have had a shot for goal himself. Yes, well, he's actually been too team oriented. The kick he knew, Jakovic knew the footy was coming to him, but just floated away. Gee, uh, Jakovic won't handle, will he? Had a chance then. Brown at the back. Grinter. Uh, well, Pete McKenna will tell you, Bruce, that not many 4-4s do handball. You played there once too, didn't you, Ross? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he should have had a shot. 30 metres, an open goal. He just should have belted it through. Stasevich and Spalding, who's the man in question. Todd Viney, well, ripped off him by Turner in the end and gets good distance. Half volley by Lovett, couldn't manage it. Manson, Yates, free kick against Williams. Played well, Yates, had the measure of Williams. Had to stand his ground there, didn't he? Little one to Steins. Well, he's remarkable, this man. A terrific stamina, Bruce. Well, I mentioned earlier, there's never been a ruckman to cover the ground as he does throughout a match. No mark at the back to Clark. Phoebe. Jakovic versus McEwen. Ronnie did well. Jakovic and McEwen. Ooh. Good contest. Turner. Lehman. Keeps it in play. Will it sit for right? He's away. He'll take them on now with a bounce. And a second. Runs a long way and kicks it to Dacos, but he's there again, Stones. It's square, he's got Colin McGurnsey on. He's remarkable to love it. Bad kick it was, though, by Graham Wright. Here's Todd Miney. They were let off the hook then, Melbourne. Now, oh, stretch a touch of the fumbles. Stephen Stretch kicks on the left foot. He's got a loose man out wide. He's found his captain, Gary Lyon. They need a quick goal, Melbourne. They trail by 10 points. Gary Lyon to the half forward line. Jay Viney held his ground. Francis tried to muscle him out of it. Now, Jakovic will lead to the pocket here. It's coming out there. He'll get there. He's got two to beat. Punched away by Ronnie McEwen was good play. But there, again, there were two men there to contest with. Makes it hard, Pete, doesn't it? Three kicks in the third quarter. Eight to Collingwood, one to Melbourne. Very interesting stat. Well, still at half forward for the Demons. Krasiska, Stasevich. Stasevich traps it. Todd Viney couldn't mark it. Now he's got it. Kicks it on the left foot. There's a loose man here. Oh, Grinter had to set himself. The Collingwood players wanted a little bit more. Sock it off the ground. The fist away. This is Jay Viney playing the ball in front of him. Taps it on, but straight to Scott Russell. Russell's got no one to give it to. He played that well. It was a good ball, and he gives it on to Lehman. Who quickly gives it across to Turner, to Mullane. Round the body, Manson, Bryce, Port, Dyson under pressure, Obstin Dacos. Leave it for Dacos. Play on call. Collingwood fans want another free kick. Here's Yates to the space, to Spalding. Good kick, Yates. Magnificent game. Spalding to Eichel. Can he get it on to Jakovic in a hurry, or is he too far away? Monkhurst getting ready in the background. Here's Jakovic. McEwen did well. Gafer. Krasiska. Stasevich. Russell. Mullane the kick. Lehman there. Steins gets back. Mullane takes his time. Dacos provides a lead now. The kick not that good. Dyson. Thumps it back to half forward. Shaw. Well played. A good handball to Stasevic. It's still in the centre of the ground. Mullane a wild hand pass. Eichel. Dyson. Oh, no one there for Melbourne. Kelly or Mark uncontested. That's not good play by the Demons. Tony Shaw, centre wing. Gavin Brown has Mark in front of Steve Phoebe. Again, the long way home, Collingwood. But the short one is on. He's found Graham Wright. He might go back to Brown here. No, he won't. Graham Wright, Starsevich. 
Loose men everywhere for Cunningwood. Jamie Turner will try and break the tackle. He's lost it. Could be a turnover here. It will be. Simon Eichel. Oh, another shocking kick. Straight to Gaper. Um, Melbourne making a lot of mistakes. Darren Bennett's on, spilling off as we see Kelly kick to the half forward line. Brown and Yates and Steins. Still Steins took a long time. Here's Williams. Free kick to Melbourne. Yep, holding on there to Yates. Well, what was Graham Yates doing there? Now he's going to give it the stretch. Drop punt, Bennett's just come back on, Kelly, here's Eichel to the space, McEwen playing in front of Jakovic as he's done all day, little left foot, Eichel, Gary Lyon quickly, only oh. as far as Shaw, doesn't make many mistakes, Lyon, Shaw to Starcevic, you just get the feeling if Collingwood get the next goal, it'll be significant, Francis to Mullane, a good kick, a mighty kick by Francis. Yes, Jay Vine is just finding the run of France a little bit too much at the moment. He's just too quick, but that was a very good kick. And Mullane's mobility also just proving a little too much for Brett Lovett. Get See that feeling. again, he just gets away too quickly. Melbourne's kicking on the... Uh, Melbourne's kicking the forward line has been terrible in this quarter, Ross. Well, when Gary Lyon picked that ball up on the half-forward line, he should have let his teammate take it. He was going forward of the play. Gary Lyon cut him off. You get the same feeling, Ross, of Mullane goals here. They're going to yes. stretch it a bit, aren't they, yes. Collingwood? Ten points the margin. Will Mullane kick his third and make it 16 points? 40 metres out. Drop punt. He's got it. Mullane's got three and Collingwood's edge away now at 9-8 to 7-4. There's Mullane's... The days are grey. In the last decade, we've all cut back on drinking. All of us, except for young women. Is it more acceptable these days? Are they being targeted by advertising? Or are young women under more pressure than men? It all makes sense in the Sunday age. The problem with most small video cameras? Uncontrollable shakes. But now, Panonyx VHS Gyro Movie takes out the shake, even on the move. Just how you like it. Stir, not shake. The world's first gyro movie. Panasonic. Garlic, the plant that is famous for its unusual smell and medicinal properties, has an interesting history. Sanskrit records show Indians used garlic for its powers 5,000 years ago. Egyptian slaves stopped work on the pyramids when their daily supply of garlic ran out. During World War I, the British pressed the juice from garlic onto soldiers' wounds. While in Russia, garlic is a tradition and cues formed by garlic during the flu epidemics. Would you like to try garlic but are put off by the smell? Then try odor-free kaiolic. Kaiolic, the king of garlic. Its reputation comes from the unusual aging process which concentrates 50 minerals, sulfur compounds and enzymes into the famous kaiolic extract. Since most people are subjected to city living and convenience foods, I recommend we should take a plant concentrate like kaiolic to support our well-being. Kaiolic, the king of garlic, you can get from health food stores and chemists. I take kaiolic every day. Someone's killed Jack Carter's brother, and now he wants revenge. Want to be dead? And the mob wants him. Get Carter tonight on Seven. They cared for Jason, loved him. He has to go back, hasn't he? Yeah. Now they must say goodbye. Yeah, Mrs. Tyler, I, don't, I just want my little boy, you know. Return him to his mother. How do they know if she's fit to be a mother? But Lucy has suspicions. She can't manage without help. Will Jason be safe? What's wrong with him? A country practice, Monday on Seven. Very handy break. Coming with lead by three goals. Smothered off the boot. There's Jay Viney to the half forward line. Free kick against Gaper. In the back, no advantage because it really didn't fall the way of the Melbourne player. So that's Grinter. They really need a couple of quick goals, Melbourne, to stem the tide. Collingwood getting on top. Grinter to the pocket. Oh, Lyon should mark this. Oh, he's dropped it. 
Oh, is that a free kick for Djakovic? No. Take it away by Lehman. Russell. The Magpies up and running again. Scott Russell. Krasiska. And the running Collingwood players looking good as Gavin Krasiska kicks to the half forward line. Yates has got to commit himself and he does. Gee, Jacobs was slow to move there. He was the one that had to make the move and he just stood still. Liam Yates, all oh, dangerous. Oh, Steins. Back to Yates. It comes off. Dyson. The long kick to centre wing. Bennett. He had a few to beat. And Stasevich takes the mark. Stasevich on to Kerrison. Collingwood looking good. Kerrison to the half-forward line. Manson and Steins. Manson nearly a big mark. But it was not taken. It's taken away by Peter Rowe. She tries a bounce under pressure. Run down. Eichold looks for a free kick. Good take by Rowe on the up. Centre half-forward Bennett. Outnumbered again. Kelly. Kerrison. Clever. Stasevich. Breaks two tackles. Swings it out wide to Gaper. Who breaks the grip to tackle. To Krasiska. That's good rebound football. Morewood versus Rowe. It's been a good duel. To Bryce, who misses it. This is vital. Manson. Across the face. She fumbles a lot, Bryce, doesn't he? It's a vital mistake. Manson with a behind. And 9-9 nine, nine to 7-4. And the man who won a Brownlow medal with both of these clubs, Peter Moore, has ops to bring her back in. Had the job on Dacos all day. Looks for Steins. And oh. his wonderful Ruckman takes the mark and then kicks it to Dyson. The Demons need the next goal. Dyson to the space. Todd Viney works for him. It should sit up for him here. It does. Djakovic in the goal square. Not a good kick by Viney. But again, that soft footing there, Bruce, makes it very difficult to get distance with the kick. He just slipped as he went to put that through to Djakovic. A few to Kelly to Gaifer. Yes, if still they're kicking to the forward line. has been terrible, Melbourne, in this quarter. Brown, Stasevich starting to come into the game. Craig Stasevich, the chip pass. Can Williams get there? He can. In Melbourne, oh, they look a little bit ragged at the moment. Dacos, the lead is on, but there is that man again. Jimmy Steins, Tingay, stretch. They need something happening at half forward. The ball's hit the deck. They've got a chance now. Jay Viney, dispossessed. Oh, desperation for Siska. Fantastic play, but there's Steins. Dyson a fumble. Collingwood aren't fumbling. Melbourne are. And taken away by Francis. Gavin Brown breaks the tackle. And the Collingwood champs up and running. The short one is on. Manson can't get there. Bryce taps it away for Manson. And Paul Bryce from halfback. Brings it to centre wing and it should be a mark here and it is taken by Eichold. Clark loose at half forward. Eichold centres it. Good kick to Lyon. Who can go on with it here. Djakovic on the lead. Lyon goes for him. It took a long time to get there. Francis to McEwen. Collingwood with a chance. Yates had to go against the numbers. Morwood. To Russell. A quick kick. Williams with the pace against Stretch. Stretch falls over. Williams takes him on, gets around and kicks it to Dacos. And now he normally kicks these. Watch this one for Peter. Another Dacos gem. And suddenly the Maggies are away. 10-9 to 7-4. Australian-made Lufkin Unilock Tape Measure 1995 saved $10. You can't buy it for less anywhere. You can do it with the Q ones, cause we've got a million things. The problem with most small video cameras? Uncontrollable shakes. But now, Panasonic's VHS Gyro Movie takes out the shake, even on the move. Just how you like it. Stir, not shake it. The world's first gyro movie. Panasonic. Performance like this takes the sustained energy that only one cereal was created to give. Kellogg's Sustain. Made for the Australian Institute of Sport, this scientific balance of delicious grains, fruit and nuts, complex carbohydrates, controlled sugar with low salt and fat gives the essential fuel for lasting energy and better performance. 
A fact champions like these prove every day. Kellogg's Sustain keeps the energy in your day longer. In the last decade, we've all cut back on drinking. All of us, except for young women. Is it more acceptable these days? Are they being targeted by advertising? Or are young women under more pressure than men? It all makes sense in the Sunday age. Now there's a surefire way to get your fire going. Jiffy Fire Lighters. Burns up to 15 minutes without kindling. Jiffy's a surefire fire. There are drivers and there are drivers. Just as there are oils, and there's Castrol GTX too. It protects more engines than any other oil. So unless it's Castrol GTX too, oils ain't oils. It's a school dedicated to tradition and discipline. Virtues upheld by every teacher except one. Was this a dagger I see before me? <laughs> I'm hearing rumors, John. Tear out the entire introduction. Some unorthodox teaching methods. Robin Williams. Break out. Ah! This is Dick Poet Society. I want names. Bring your friend hither. And the Academy Award winner by Australia's Peter Weir. Seize the day. Toyota presents Dead Poet Society, Sunday night on Salem. So Collingwood really pulling it to Melbourne there in the third quarter. Great goal by Dacos. They'd stretched a handy lead. Late in the third quarter, this incident occurred, something that certainly didn't please Collingwood. Their captain, Tony Shaw, who'd played so very well. Stephen Stretch coming in against Shaw. And Shaw going to ground. And no free kick paid here. You'll see it on replay a couple of times. Shaw with his eye on the footy and Stretch coming in. And as I said... Uh, Hayden Kennedy not giving the free kick or John Russo and the stretcher came out for Tony Shaw He was eventually carried from the arena his place was taken by Jason Kroll and we'll find out from Scotty Palmer tonight just what the situation is with Tony Shaw remembering that Collingwood does have a bye but at three quarter time Manson kicked a late goal and Collingwood had had a tremendous third quarter five goals to one so Melbourne had plenty to do it was 11-10 to 7-5 remembering the importance of the game for the Demons and for Collingwood We'll go back to the final term, no addition to the score early in the last quarter. Steins over the top, Spalding. Can Melbourne conjure up something here? Spalding's high one to centre wing. Bennett. Collingwood recover. The kick by Russell to the pocket. Dacos and Rowe. And again a ball in. So again a quiet start here. Dacos with his five goals has probably been the most effective forward on the ground. Well, eight kicks and five goals from those eight kicks. So, you know, he's a dangerous player. You just can't leave him, a, can't leave him alone. Oh, there's Steins again. Terrific play. Right. Long hand pass to the pocket. Here's Andrew Obst. He did that well. Now, they're off and running. Tingay. What can they create here, Melbourne? It's kicked at the space. This is Dyson against Gavin Brown. Beautiful play by Brown, and he's found Lehman. Bit of class, wasn't it, Pete? Yes, he's a great player. Lehman at 50 metres. Probably won't make the distance here. Look for the short one. There's the kick, a nice-looking drop punt up in front of goal. They should force it through here, Melbourne. They do, and Steins is everywhere. And it was uh, that player that tapped it over the line for a point mm. to the Magpies. This flat start will suit uh, Collingwood, Peter. They're not going to be too concerned if they can just hold Melbourne at bay. Well, it's five goals... Uh, the margin now, so they have to kick over five goals to hit the front, Melbourne. Sporting uncontested. Steins uh, just holding Starsevich out legally. Sporting to Phoebe. 22 shots to 12 Collingwood's had. And here's Bennett against uh, Kelly. Kelly's been very good in defence. Lyon. Jakovic. McEwen comes back. Jakovic, McEwen, Jay Viney. Oh, McEwen beats three of them. With a bit of luck, but still did it, Francis to Brown. Gee, that could be the straw that breaks the Melbourne back. Francis kick, not good. Spalding takes the mark. Great work, McEwen, fantastic. Well, they really would have expected to get a goal out of that situation, Ross, with Ronnie outnumbered as he was. Spalding to Brett Lovett. Oh, Lehman's got him. Morwood, who's gone as well. Some tired players holding the footing, surely. Francis away. 
Manson and Bryce. Bryce with a thump to the boundary line and a ball in. Tell you that's a freak against balling there, Bruce, holding the thing uh, can also be a push in the back. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, uh, you carry the player forward, you can't push players in the back. Thought he uh, looked for it a bit. Well, there's Stephen Clark at the centre of the ground. Todd Viney runs straight at the ball. But it's a loose one to Collingwood. Smothered, though, that hand pass. Players taking their eyes off the ball. Melbourne supporters are feeling beholding the ball. The umpire having none of that will be a bounce. But as you said, Ross, a fairly flat start in yeah, the quarter is, is yes. going to suit Collingwood right down to the ground. Few of the Melbourne players just looking a little weary. Yep. 11-11 to 7-5. Five goals. They really need a decent burst. I don't seem to have anyone to lift them at the... Oh, that's a free kick from the back to Clark. Now they're off and running. Jay Barney. He hooks it back. Here's a chance. Bennett. He's marked. Clever. Bennett is marked. 35 metres from goal. Yeah, that ball was dropping quickly. And he just stuck out his left hand first and just scooped it. Just watch this again. Had to turn around quickly. Scoop it in left hand. Well controlled. As he was in the air, he used his hip, didn't he? Which was to get Kelly out, out of the way. But he's only had three kicks and two handles. Very important kick, Pete. They need this. They need it badly, the Demons. Darren. Oh, he's kicked into the man. Would you believe it? Cardinals sit in football. It's not their day, Melbourne. Jamie Turner gets it to Scott Russell. There's Ops. A clever mark. Andrew Ops. For the half forward line, he'll find Phoebe. But that is an unforgivable sin of football. Phoebe. He's looking for an option. Jagovic is crowded this time. Bennett's going back to the square. Now, can someone get a run at it? Bennett will fly from the back. Jagovic waits there, but it comes off the hands and over the line. Trooper are behind to Melbourne, but they need goals. 7 6 plays 11 11. There's well, a Cardinal sitting. I think it's sorry there, Bruce. I think Bennett was definitely deceived by Kelly, who'd gone back behind the mark yep. a few steps to run at it. And Bennett not giving himself anywhere near enough room. And there's no problem with the distance, so he really uh, should have done better. Didn't need to try and get as many metres as he could. Good mark to Brown. Plays on to Lehman. To Graham Wright, who switches it to the centre. Francisco and Lovett. Lovett hurled. No free kick. Russell, yes it is, coming back to love it. Very late, wasn't it? Todd Viney outnumbered. Gavin Brown. Troy Lehman. Dacos, his target. And Road able to take it. Should play it on to love it here. Well, he goes to Phoebe. But uh, no options for the moment. Stein's calling for it in the centre. Phoebe to the centre square. Lyon and Bennett the targets. Jay Viney and Mullane. Scott Russell to Stasevic. Caught by Ops. Love it with a left footer. Stein's versus Kelly. No free kick to Collingwood. Play on call. Gaper. Oh, well done. Quick kick by Russell. Francisca concedes about to 30 metres. Kerrison and Turner can raffle it. Now Gaper. Yes, yeah, Gaper, a sweeping hand pass has found Kelly, who's been like a rock of Gibraltar at half back. There's the fist to ground. Jason Kroll. On the left foot, Morwood slips over. At the back is Peter Rowe. Doing pretty well down there. Oh, smothered magnificently by Williams. Dacos, an open goal. Morwood, goal in the prize. I think the Demons are gone. Collingwood 12-11, Melbourne 7-6. There's some great teamwork here by Collingwood. Prowl to play again, that ball forward here. Moore did very well, continued, got up quickly, and the smother there by Williams in the follow-up. Moore still running in the foreground, you can see there. Dacos unselfishly, and as that happened, Darren Bennett off, and Grinder back on. Moorwood's goal after some great teamwork, Bennett off the ground. Thought he might have hurt himself when uh, he took that mark and oh, he missed the, the goal. Look at this. It's got a swollen, kick. Swollen, hasn't it? But the scoreboard shows Collingwood 35 points in front. They've won seven out of the last eight. Dyson, Francisco on his own to take it. And it's all falling down for Melbourne at the moment. 
Stasovic the target. And he gets him. Gaifer's inside if he wants him. Now to Gaifer. Slow handball though. Gaifer sells a dummy on Grinter. Kroll. Can charge all the way and kick a goal here. It's Sleuth. And Collingwood's home. They're celebrating just like they did here in October last year. 13-11 to 7-6. I was watching Jason Cole there, Bruce. He ran from the right across the other side of the ground for the wing. Stephen Stretch was his marksman. And he just ran and ran and ran and made space. And Gaper saw that and he finished off very, very well. Well done, Jason Crow and his teammates congratulated him accordingly. Good to see Jason Kroll in the side and kicking a goal. And there's a disappointed man, John Northey. But Collingwood have been far more desperate since half-time than Melbourne. Collingwood are backing up in numbers. Melbourne aren't. There's Manson. Oh, Bryce, no vision then. He had no idea who was coming at him. Socket off the ground. There's Morwood receiving from Russell. Stasovic, a good pick-up. 30 metres from goal. Another one on the board with a Magpie. Today's game is part of the Carlton and United Breweries 1991 AFL Premiership season. Well, that magic little burst would have brought back some memories for sure. Collingwood in the finals last year. They charged away in the end thrashing Melbourne. 19-13, they kicked 13 goals to two after halftime. Melbourne, eight goals, seven. Dacos kicked six and Mullane, three for Collingwood. Djakovic kicked five for Melbourne. And the official attendance, 50,000. And 85, and who knows, had the capacity been about 100,000, I reckon they would have got close. Terrific performance by Collingwood, it's going to be very tough for Melbourne now. Collingwood winning eight out of their last nine. After the break, we'll talk to Kim Sporton, she'll tell us what's happening in Sports World tomorrow, and go out to Waverley to see some Kilda up against Carlton. When you first buy a home, you don't really own very much of it, do you? But if you have a Westpac home loan, you can own more of your home much sooner. You can reduce the term of your loan without increasing the amount of your repayments. You can even vary your loan at any time to suit your changing circumstances. Just talk to your Westpac branch about these and other ways you can own your home sooner. You can bank on us. The problem with most small video cameras? Uncontrollable shakes. But now, Panasonic's VHS Gyro Movie takes out the shake, even on the move. Just how you like it. Stir, not shake it. The world's first Gyro Movie. Panasonic. It's fabulous, Joyce, because I wore the mini at the micro, so I look absolutely knockout. And the next thing you know, Brennan arrives in his daggy old... <clears throat> I'll look up. Just hold on to Joycey a moment, will you? Look, I'm here about the car premium payment. What's the problem? Well, it seems quite high. I just take the money. Uh, but I'm paying for things that are already covered in my home, life and health policies. I just protect Joycey. Every insurance company is the same. Well, well not GIO Australia. I, I mean, they don't make you pay for all these useless benefits. I suppose that's why their premiums are so much lower. Oh, of course. Oh. Well, look, thank you very much for your help. Hi, uh, Joycey. Looks like that lot of GIO just got another one. No, no, nothing. Phone 008 244 355 for a better deal on your car insurance. Rapunzel! Hey, Rapunzel! 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let down your hair so that I might climb that golden stair! Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Come on, drop it to me, baby! Yeah! If there's one cup of coffee you don't want interrupted, it's your Maxwell House special cup of the day. And remember, patties are available in the dairy case of your supermarket or good food shops. Hello, my name's Ben Elton. As you perhaps know, Steve Vizard is wallying it up like a bogan on the Costa del Lagalau in Spain all week, so I'm taking over tonight live, so why don't you check it out?
Shacking up with a criminal becomes a recipe for danger. We're going to have to knock off a couple more places. Lois Crawford sets out to crush any resistance. More importantly, they'll be under no misapprehension as to who is running this school. And Sophie's passion is returned. David, read my lips. You are headed for trouble. Big trouble. Home and away. 6.30 Monday on 7. Shortly we'll be going out to Waverley for some Kilda versus Carlton. Before then, let's find out what's happening on Sports World tomorrow morning. Kim's down in the Sports World office working pretty hard tonight. And Kim Rodney Martin's had a terrific week. He won the World Open squash. He's still going in the Australian Open and uh, we've got him on tomorrow's show. Yes, that's right, Bruce. In fact, I've had the good fortune to see him in, in action this week. I've been down watching him at the Australian titles a couple of times and he is in sensational form at the moment. Uh, he's, uh, of course, won, beat the number one, two and three in the world last week in Adelaide. So he's in high spirits. And he's attributing it to a sports psychologist he's been seeing. He says uh, a chap in Queensland that has been helping him out with the mental edge has uh, really made the world of difference. So uh, he's playing your hunger tonight in the semis. He's won the Australian title three times, so he's going for his fourth. It'd be a great match tonight, Bruce, and it uh, should be a very interesting interview tomorrow. Gee, it's good that he has been able to win. You th would have thought he may have had a letdown a little bit like Ian Baker Finch in the PGA. So Sandy's going to join us with golf as well. Yes, our friend Sandy will be joining us. I believe uh, Grady and Elkington are six shots off the pace. So we've still got some Aussies there in with a bit of a chance, but Norman and IBF not looking too good at the moment. Kim, I'm looking forward to going to Tokyo in a couple of weeks for the World Athletic Championships. Yes, and I believe you'll have Jane Fleming as a travelling companion. You'll be pretty pleased about that. <laughs> that. That will be good, and she's on tomorrow. And we'll she's be... on tomorrow, yes. The prospects of, of all the Australians over there. Um, and we've got the uh, City to Surf also. We'll be highlighting that in the show tomorrow. Uh, Monaghetti will be the last chance we'll, we'll, we'll get to see Monaghetti's form before he takes off to Tokyo for the, world, uh, the marathon over there. Yeah, he's one of the favourites there. Now, what about the touring cars? Yes, we'll have Jim Richards. Gentleman Jim will be in. He's actually clinched his, his fourth title, but the last round is tomorrow in Sydney, and he's qualified, I think he's qualified fourth fastest. Um, uh, Peter Brock second and, and Scaife first. But yeah, good on Jim. He's doing really well, isn't he? He's had a terrific year. And who's the football guest tomorrow? Lee Matthews. Oh, well, he'll, he'll, he'll be, be in good spirits, won't he? He'll be in great spirits. Now, ask me how I went on the footy tipping today. Uh, how'd you go on the footy tipping today? Sensational, yes. <laughs> Tipped Collingwood and Dacos. What a great, what a great guy. <laughs> Kim, you sound excited. Thanks for that. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow morning, Bruce. Waverley. Uh, can't shut her up, can I? Waverley tomorrow. Uh, today, I mean. St Kilda up against Carlton. Big game out there. They'd had a bye the Saints. They'd lost three in a row. Carlton had beaten Geelong last Saturday. Let's go out there and have a look at highlights of the first half. Forward pocket, Satori in front, down the ground and coming through Verbeek. Stuart Lowe, Lowe 55 metres out, goes long in direction of Lockett, the square. Ball to ground, Rice, can he get it off the ground? He has. Against the experienced Madden, ball at St Kilda's left half forward flank as Coughlin gets on there quickly, looking for Lockett, that's a better kick and a good lead. Lockett. Very deliberate as he comes in for his second. Ball on its way. It's there. Kill the leading, low leaning. Out the back door to Nick Lee Winmar. Well, I don't know if that was intended, but it's come off to make the margin 25 points. As he's kicking the ruse coming off for O'Sullivan. And he's floated it through. Carlton doing some frustrating things here at the moment. Coughlin's loose. Plays on to Harvey. Over the top he'll go. Here's another one to Tony Lockett. That's four. Tries to draw the player. Succeeds eventually and finds Sexton. Michael Sexton towards Kernahan. Good mark. Hasn't been as dominant as far as goal kicking is concerned this year. But he's snuck that one home. Elvin. Breaking as he gets the ball away, just as he got it away. Bradley going onto the right foot as this Carlton's fourth. It is. Overruns it, Hannah shrugs the tackle. A little too far for Ratton, but he recovers and shrugs another one. Gives it to Kernahan. He left puts it high. The Blue Boys are coming back. Greek tackled by Cavan and over the top. Rice has got an open goal if he can kick straight. He has. Inside 50, low backs back. Can't take the mark. Oh, picked up by Tim Allen. Across the goals he goes, and he's put through another one. Towards Bradley. Took it well. Off to Kernahan. The Crow eaters combined. Now it's Mill Hannah. Bradley saying go. 
Craven's off at 50 metres, and that looks like a goal. Carlton will love another one before half time. Phillips to Hannah, they've got the chance. Mill Hannah from 44 metres sets sail for home and has read it. Yes, good first half there, Carlton. Coming back in the second quarter after the Saints had 13 scoring shots to one at quarter time, and at half time, St. Kilda by 25 points, 11 11 to eight goals for that's where we pick it up Don Scott Sandy Roberts the commentators let's go back to Waverley for the start of the second half St Kilda go into the second half with a 25 point lead 11-11 plays 8-4 Justin Madden still on the interchange bench Vidovic wins it Greg had a busy first half down towards half forward low and Dorothy Lowe picks it up, snaps round his body, Lockett watches it sail through for a goal. What a start to the third quarter by St Kilda and Stuart Lowe. 12-11, plays 8-4. Well, we've praised Andrew Cavanagh for his work since coming on in the second quarter, but on that occasion he really didn't put his body in at the centre bounce. And Vitovic ran straight, got the ball down. Had there been a more of a contest, at least the ball would have come down into dispute. But they got it out of the centre too easily on that occasion, St Kilda, and low second. 83 plays 52, 31 points. Vitovic again wins it, again down to Greg, dodging and weaving. He pumps it down towards the forward line. Through low it goes, sock it off the ground. And there's going to be a free kick. It'll go back to Carlton. I think Sexton may take a free kick in the back pocket. Again, the ball coming out of the centre rather easily. Cavanagh will really have to lift his game in there against Vitovic. Obviously, he doesn't like the leak in the groin area, but then again, who does? And there he is, showing his mobility. The man just talking about Andrew Cavanagh. Plays on towards the centre. Grant in front, a strong mark. Really did have a purple patch mid-season, David Grant. He was an excellent player in the back pocket for St Kilda. He goes on looking for low. Low in front of Dorotic. He trips Dorotic. Low doesn't take advantage. Plays on quickly. Pekin. Morris running well down from centre half back. Bond. Did he infringe? No. Play on, says the umpire. And Meldrum will mop up. Chips the ball out in the direction of Ratton. Ratton will run onto it. Kane Taylor restricting him. And he'll go back for his kick, Ratton, in towards the centre. Bond Phillips by himself. Handball. Now they're going to try and run the ball through the centre. James. Looking nowhere to go. Going everywhere but the right place. Ratton, another youngster. Chips it short. Half volley. Madden. Uh, Kernahan, but can't get it on. Harvey. Ratton in pursuit. Greg. Done well since starting the game, Greg. His first game but doesn't find Dean Rice and the ball to be thrown in. Right forward pocket for Carl at the St Kilda. Critical quarter for both sides. Cavadon and Lowe. The back to Phillips. Darui and Rice. Cavadon. Got a hand to it. Lowe. Scoops it out but straight to Darui. A high kick back towards centre wing. No mark. The race is on. Kernahan. Well, he got it out, but straight to Danny Craven. He had a fabulous first half. Craven heads towards Lockett. Can't take it. Rice into the open goal, and there's another one. So the Saints again with two quick goals. Skip well clear. 13-11-89. Carlton are 8-4-52. just located another case of abuse. Follow me. This sort of thing happens when you get involved with people you don't know. People you can't trust. People who treat cars like this. But here at BP Car Care, you know who you're dealing with. Every time your local BP Car Care man does a job, he puts his name on the line. Now you can fight car abuse wherever you see the BP Car Care sign. BP on the move. You can do it with McEwen's, cause we've got a million things.
the Australian-made Lufkin Unilock Tape Measure 1995 saved $10. You can't buy it for less anywhere. You can do it with the new ones, cos we've got a million things. This is the man who makes Kleenex tissues. All our tissue products are made from plantation wood grown on tree farms and from sawmill waste. To clean the wood, we're replacing chlorine with oxygen-based bleaching. To find out more, read the environmental update on our packaging. Australian Football Video presents vintage football from the Seven Sport Classics Collection. Seven's magic moments and the sensational 70s. Football action to get your blood boiling. In Seven's magic moments, thrill to 30 minutes of unrivaled football history. From the brilliance of Baldock to the antics of Jacko. And the sensational 70s. Highlights from one of Aussie Rule's finest decades. Magic moments and sensational 70s. Two magnificent Seven Sport Classics from Australian Football Video. Today, some women will leave for work looking like they just stepped out of a salon. With new salon selectives from Helene Curtis, you can select your personalized combination of shampoos and conditioners for salon beautiful hair. Like you just out of a salon. Feel salon beautiful every day. A Seven News exclusive. Stay here as a mystery man. But a Seven News investigation has uncovered his true identity. Politics and weather. <laughs> Across the nation. Nothing he managed to get his mouth over him. Resuscitated. Around the globe. More of Melbourne. All of the world. McCarthy finally came home today. Jennifer Cutt and Seven Nightly News. 22 minutes to play. Kevin and up a little early. He's really got to put his body in against Vitovic. St Kilda getting the break once again. They've done this in the third quarter. Lockett. Dorotic. Winmar, can he get away? No. Tackle strong. Is it too high? Ooh. No, the umpire said dropping the ball. And against Nicky Winmar. Peter Dean to relieve. And he'll play on quickly to Bassett. Carlton will try and run this ball. They've got numbers there. Dorotic, Elvin adding support. Elvin with nowhere to go. Dorotic in the direction of Verbeek in front, Grant. That's his second strong mark for the third quarter in front. Doing well, David Grant. A lot of teammates of his are coming back into form as he is in this game. Greg, first gamer. Picked up a lot of positions. Handballs to Coglin. Now they're going to run a bit of it. Can't follow it up. A bit slow. Winmar. Bassett. J uh, Ratton. By himself, third beat. Goes on quickly to kernahan has got the break on Morris, and he'll go back for a set shot. 50 metres out, the captain goes short. Hardy punches the ball away. Taylor to mop up. He'll go change direction to Newport. Getting away from Dennis. Stephen Newport had the job on Bradley in the first quarter. Harvey being held, you can see there. Finally, the umpire's seen it, and the free kick will go Robert Harvey's way. Coming up for his 13th kick, he wants Dean Rice. Finds him just outside 50. Sexton keeping an eye on Lockett. Rice in towards Lockett. Oh, he got the fly. Pushed down eventually for one ball. Well done by Peter Dean to follow up then. Came over the back. Used his experience to get over and push the ball over. 13-12. That well, is 8-4, so it's 25 effective scoring shots to 12. Sexton again. Towards Alvin. Now he was held. Tommy Alvin. Still really in the back pocket. Wants Kernahan. Grant, the effective spoiler, and Bradley can't keep it in. 
Carlton Sandy have only got the one fit player on the interchange bench. That's Justin Madden. Luke O'Sullivan, who's crashed earlier in the game, has gone to hospital with a suspected punctured lung. Let's hope that he's OK. Newport at the bottom. Still going. With him is James. Past Harvey it goes. Phillips caught. Harvey tried to intercept. The Winmar just keeps it in play. May set something up here for Coglin. No, good work by D to paddle it out to Bradley. They're out of trouble. Good teamwork. Meldrum across to Phillips. Hurry kick. Morris in front of Kernahan. And he'll take it at centre week. Bit of pressure by the captain, captain on Morris. But he stood his ground, Russell Morris. A rejuvenated player this year since transferring from Hawthorne. Low. A strong mark. Plays on quickly, the big fellow. From the edge of the square goes in direction of Lockett, who's by himself. No. No, there's a free push. kick. There's a push. On Tony Lockett. He's kicked six. He's only 20 metres out. The angle, about 45 degrees, so it shouldn't present a problem for him. Plenty of goal face open to him. Quite deliberate, adjusting his clothing. And now he lines up. What's he booted on? 6-1, is it? Today? 6-1, Sandy. Would this be 7-1 or 6-2? He's kicked at the big fellow, and St Kilda starting to go away. St Kilda, 14-12-96, Carlton, 8-4-52. 18 minutes to play, and this is the third quarter. And Carlton really started well, but now St Kilda are really controlling. 96 plays 52. Vidovic wins it to Greg. What a game he's played today. Over the head of Lowe it goes, but he backpedals and gets it. He spoons it out. But it goes straight to Derui. Grant. Well, he's also been a great performer. Certainly playing back to his best again. Winmar's got to show courage. And does. Down to Craven from 48 metres. He has a shot at goal. He floats it wide, however. And it's one behind. Gee, that was a good effort by Nicky Whitmer. He really had to go there. And just by the effort, he got it down to Craven. That was terrific team stuff by Nicky Whitmer. 45 points now the margin. And the Saints earlier in the game led by that margin. Carlton cut it back to 90 points. But they've shot away again. Dorotich almost out of the halfback flank. They'll have to make a change, I think, Carlton in the ruck, Sandy. Bit of pushing and shoving going on there. Cavendon was in front, and he will take the football. In fact, uh, as I speak, Don, it looks as though Justin Madden is about to come back on. So, your coaching skills are very apparent. Phillips, Bassett almost throws it over the back to Phillips again. Down to half forward. Chancing his arm was limited. A opportunity for Meldrum. Shoots him towards goal, but he's away to the left and one behind only. So Carlton's first score of this third quarter are behind. They move to 8-5. St Kilda have added three goals too. Kane Taylor has it at half back. Nowhere to go. Finally finds Crawley who's starting to run. It's good to see the fullback running. Newport, a high ball. Really not looking for a teammate. Hoping and puts it up high. And it's going to be run out by Bassett. Hannah under all sorts of trap pressure. Burke, who laid that good tackle. Bassett onto the right foot. Spots Dennis, who's just about to go off through interchange. He in turn goes down looking for Bond, but he's just Phillips. He's just a little too small against Morris. Now it's Bond. He'll go high, and he does, in the direction of Satori. But it's the beat. Now mopping up. Newport over the top. 
Craven, who's picked up a lot of possessions today, didn't Pekin. Pekin in towards Harvey. Green bowls him. Dean. Alvin. Grant. Dennis Rich. My ball, boys. I'll restart the game. St Kilda, 14-13, 97. Carlton, 8-5, 53. Carlton kicking to right a screen. Harvey. Under pressure from Elvin. The play will be restarted. Just under 15 and a half minutes remaining in this vital third quarter. Vidovic and Satori. One by Vidovic. Pushed down towards Greg. Clever tap on to Harvey. Well, he's got Craven even further forward if he wants him or Pekin. In fact, that pair will combine. Look at Craven go. Sexton out in front of Lockett. But Lockett recovers beautifully. Gives it away to Tim Allen. Allen shoots it towards goal and bang! To build a vehicle of power and refinement requires great perseverance. Here is a car for those who admire similar qualities. between Australia and Japan. A new Virada V6. Please consider. Make tracks into your nearest gas and fuel showroom. It's the gas winter clearance. And prices have taken a tumble. Do you know about Taft? It's the hairspray you can count on, no matter what you're doing. Taft isn't expensive, it holds your hair in place perfectly and it's great for picking up men. <laughs> See what I mean? Taft hairspray puts you in control. Rapunzel! 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 <laughs> yeah, let down your hair so that I might climb that golden stair! Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Come on, drop it to me, baby! Yeah! If there's one cup of coffee you don't want interrupted, it's your Maxwell House special cup of day. There are drivers, and there are drivers. Just as there are oils, mm -hmm. and there's Castrol GTX too. It protects more engines than any other oil. So unless it's Castrol GTX too, oils ain't oils. Mm -hmm. On Celebrity Family Feud, the political leaders go in against the cricket legends. Then see who's revealed on the big wheel when the stars come out from 7.30 tonight. On Hinch Monday night, we expose a bizarre religious cult. Get off the camera, will you? One man fears for his four-year-old daughter, who the cult claims is possessed. Happy birthday. And start the new information about Marilyn Monroe and President Kennedy's love affair. Monday night on Hinch. Back in the middle once more. Vitovic gets it away to Greg, who shoots down towards Lowe, shovels it out for Coughlin, going past on the 50-metre line, gets clear, pulls it in towards full forward, lock it at the back! Thought for a moment about playing on, but will now go back for number eight. And haven't the full forward stolen the spotlight in recent weeks? Well, he does hold the record against Halton as far as the top goal kicker is St Kilda. He's kicked 10, and he's well on target.
to beat that record. Kick 12 this season. 15 metres out. Directly in front. Lockett has booted up. Three in the first quarter, three in the second, and now two in the third. St Kilda running away, 16-13 to 8-5. Well, it is, uh, it is an impressive, Sorry. I'll try that again. <laughs> an impressive display by St Kilda. Carlton started well in this game, but really St Kilda have taken over. They mounted a bit of a challenge in the second quarter set with Carlton. But now it's just all St Kilda, and mainly due to the efforts of Vitovic in the centre here, and they're getting the break, St Kilda. Vitovic and Madden go at it again. It's Madden's turn. That's the first time Carlton have shown anything in the centre break. Now they've got it away. Cavanagh, well done over his head. Morris will run with this ball. And he'll clear for St Kilda. Good play, Russell Morris. Berg, now well done again, Morris. It's terrific running to Winmar, who can't get away. Run down by Carlton. Hannah, he's a beautiful kick of the football normally. Goes short this time and it's a good pass. And Simon Verbeek getting one of his few marks against David Grant. Plays on to Phillips. Phillips in turn over to Bradley. Deep in the pocket. Will he centre? No. He goes across the face of goal. And Satori take the mark. Crawley appealing. Actually, just looking at Bradley, I think he really did mean to pick out Satori then. Peter Satori. Played mainly in the forward pocket today. He's already kicked goals. Ooh. Lines up for his second. But he just hit that big stick in the centre, and that registers a point. So, St Kilda. 16-13, 109, Carlton, 8-6, 54. Kilda run it out through Kane Taylor. Peek him. Well, they've gone virtually nowhere, and now Morris does give it away to Kane Taylor. From half-back, converts play towards the centre, and a good mark taken at the back by Cavanagh. Plays on quickly to Meldrum. Stabbing to Satori. He's got Hannah over the top if he wants him. Or even further, Kernahan. Kernahan from a standing, standing start. A high kick in towards full forward. Grant at the back. So too Harding. Flicks round his body. Greg in front. Chasing his James. Gets a handball away, Greg, then tries to follow it up. The two go over the line on that outer side. For another throw. Look at those stats for Dean Greg. 24 possessions. 15 kicks and 9 marks. Fine achievement. Madden, Phillips, Alvin. Now they're away. Back with Phillips. Pulling it back. Grant waits at the back. Got a shove. To David Grant. To clear, he's got a couple down at half back. Craven. Had it spent almost before he got it, but now he's clear. Looking to half forward and Stuart Lowe. A casual one-hander, if you don't mind. Lockett's in the square. He goes shorter. Nathan Burke gives it to Tim Pekin. Pekin heads for home and misses. One behind. And he starts the long haul back. 16-14. Plays 8-6. Under 11 minutes remain. Sexton going short. And finding Derui. Now he's looking for options further down the ground. The long kick from Steve Derui. Greg in front, a strong mark. A terrific first up for this fellow. Number 27, formerly worn by Rod Owen, who's now at Melbourne. Greg goes long. The big pack fall to ground. Harvey running onto it. Over the left shoulder. But the ball to be thrown in. St Kilda's right forward pocket. Tim Allen in screen. Just running out of picture. Madden and Lowe to do the ruck work. The test of strength between these two big fellows. Nobody really got it down. Madden onto it this time. Elvin breaks away. Goes in towards the centre, but who does he find? The opposition lays a bit of it. Bit of it. 
really the man who got them going, St Kilda, and this is the third quarter out of the centre bounds. Goes long in the direction of low. Up they go. Cognell run onto it. The goal face open. He goes goalward. He's kicked it. And St Kilda marching on in this third quarter. St Kilda 17-14, 116. Carlton 8-6, 54. Six goals, three to two behinds this quarter. So the St Kilda chant goes up. From the middle. Oh, look at the steal by Windmark. Gracefully out of the middle. From 70 metres, he looks for Lockett. And he finds it. Great play out of the middle. We've had some wonderful performance today, St Kilda. Craven, Greg in the centre. Grant on the back line. Windmark and Lockett up forward, as well as Stuart Lowe. Harvey's picked up a lot of possessions. This all goes well for the finals. Look at going for number nine, Don. We've got to start thinking, is he going to get his 100 next week? He's kicked 92 for the season at the moment. 30 metres out. Should not miss from there. And does not. Today's game is part of the Carlton and United Breweries 1991 AFL Premiership season. Well, the Saints having a tremendous third quarter with Tony Lockett leading the charge, kicking seven goals to two by Carlton. And at three-quarter time, they had the match well and truly wrapped up at 18-16 to 10-7. The big interest on Tony Lockett, Don Scott mentioned earlier, the most goals by St Kilda player against Carlton was 10. Lockett held the record. He had nine at three-quarter time. Would he break it? Well, let's have a look at highlights of Lockett in the last quarter. And they've got the loose man down across that half forward line. Greg again finds Rice over the top to Frankie Coughlin. Frankie is 50 metres out. He chips it below. And he's saying, where's Lockett? Don't worry, he give it to him. What a gesture. How easy is that for number 11? The high ball, low in front. Goes for it. Dean will mop up. Oh. Newport. Lockett by himself. Can he mark it? No, on the second attempt. But follows up well, steps over the left shoulder. He's kicked it. He's done it. Don't worry. Low. Over the top to Harvey. There's still time, Donald. What's he going to do? Lockett wants it short. And he's got it. This is for number 13. From 30 metres. What a performance by Big Tony. He's kicked 97 goals for the season. I think he's only played 13 matches. It's a remarkable effort. And the Saints won by plenty. 23 goals, 17 to 15, 11. A big crowd out there, more than 32,000. Lockett 13, Lowe got three, Rice got three, and Allen got three. And for Carlton, Coonahan and Satori, a three each. Let's look at the other matches. Footscray, Adelaide, low scoring game. Footscray getting home pretty comfortably in the end. Eight goals, 16, 64. To Adelaide, six goals, 440. Essendon, well, they got a bit of a shock against Brisbane in the second quarter when the Bears kick 6-1, to one, but in the end, the Bombers by plenty, 23-19-157, but Brisbane not disgraced, 17-10-112. They've had some good performances in Melbourne this year. And Hawthorne, well, they kicked the sweep, a terrific performance against Fitzroy. Three players between them getting 15 goals. Hall, Hudson and Dunstall getting five each, and they won 28-27 to 10 goals, nine. Time now to check the CUB AFL 1991 Premiership Season League ladder. Very interesting. West Coast, Hawthorne take over from Geelong in second spot after last night's defeat and Hawthorne's win today. Essendon fourth, North Melbourne with that big game tomorrow, St Kilda. They've got to play Adelaide next week. If they happen to lose, Collingwood would take their place in the six. But the Saints in marvellous form today. Melbourne up against it. And really, uh, you can forget the rest as far as the finals. Adelaide, Footscray and Carlton out of business, as is Sydney, Richmond, Brisbane and Fitzroy. But uh, tremendous interest, particularly in Collingwood's charge towards the six of one. Eight out of their last nine. What's happened to Tony Shaw and the other news from today, we'll find out after the break when we talk to Doddy Palmer. This land is...
is your land, this land is my land. From the Bayside beaches to the Dandenong ranges, from the Werribee River. Brisbane Bears, 2-6. Six. 16 effective scoring shots to 8. Noonan in the back pocket. Ambles up towards the flank. Manson recovers well. We'll leave it for the smaller player in Scott Russell. Off to Gaifer. Back to Graham Wright. And back to Russell again. And now Manson. A beautiful pass by James Manson. That's what he wanted to show Peter McKenna. He can kick the football. So can Tony Shaw straight to Dacos. Over the top he goes. Short to Francis. Put him under pressure, but he shrugs the tackle. He does beautifully. Should be rewarded with a goal. He floats it into the square, which way will it bounce? Over the line for one behind. It's been a big quarter by Collingwood, Sandy. Certainly has. What have they kicked? 7 4. 7 4 to 1 goal 1. Leslie. He's got Champion alone in the pocket if he wants him, but he, does, he wants to go longer. Lewis. Over the top was right. Well, he's got to beat three of them, Graham Wright. He did well eventually just try and flick it out the back door. Ashcroft works hard. He loses it. Mullane works hard as well. Finally picked up by McLean. A little bit of room to breathe. Wants his skipper. But he can't get into the game, Roger Merritt. Hardy now a chance. Merritt running at his side, but good pressure. Applied once more, and that kick just bouncing inside the line. Oh, they're hungry, Collingwood, Bernie. They are, they are. they're really desperate. That uh, it really hurt them, that five losses in a row. And they also lost to Richmond, one of those losses, by 57 points, and that could prove costly. Half forward for the Bears. Cameron's been impressive tonight, I've felt. She's tried hard. You know, losing side, it's all right to be playing well in the side that's winning easily. He's been desperate, hasn't he? And he's put his body in and shown a bit of aggression. The ball at half forward for the Bears. Here's little Ashcroft who's tried his heart out. A little bit slow to get rid of it that time, though. That hand pass taken by Krasiska. Bears the end of a very good half of football by the Collingwood football team. They lead up here at Carrara, 11-6-72 to the Brisbane Bears. A disappointing two goals, six, a total of 18. Darren Mullane leaves the ground at half time. The Collingwood Queensland supporters group flying high with the Magpies. Well, they certainly are after that quarter. Mark Zanotti has had six goals booted on him by Peter Dacos in a fantastic first half. So just repeating those halftime scores, Collingwood are 11-6, Brisbane are 2-6. It's time now to see if you can get in the money with Tats Lotto. Good evening, welcome to the winning place. Hopefully we're lucky for you tonight, John Deeks and Marianne Van Dorsler for another draw. Another draw, here we are again, John. Welcome everyone. And of course, welcome to our officials as usual, Nigel, David and Ian this week. Draw Hello. number 1047, it's super up first. And we're rolling now, and of course, the numbers. $511,869.09 is the total prize pool. That's what we're going for, and here, here they are numbers for this evening. First off, we've got four, seven, nine, one, two, and the last one there is number six. So let's recap those. That's four, seven, nine, one, two, and six. Hopefully you're feeling lucky tonight. It's draw number 1047. Now, the Australian Lotto block with $9,817,269.14. And that's what's in the kick for tonight. And hopefully Sounds that'll good. kick your way. <laughs> that would be nice. 12 people were very happy tonight, one last week. Great, 916,000 apiece. And the first number tonight is 90, draw number 1047, and Division 1, $2,601,576.32. Here comes our second number down, and it's number 31. We had, uh, as Marianne mentioned, 12 winners last week. Five in Victoria, four up in Queensland, one in the Northern Territory, one in WA, and one over in, uh, in Adelaide, which was fabulous to see. 
number what's that 16. 16. here we go adelaide you were there uh, yeah last year. yeah last couple of days i've been over there nice weather oh nice weather and even nicer wine actually yes of course Hi to everybody in adelaide number 43 yes they have some good drops from there don't and they and a few good winners too which of course is uh, all the more reason to make sure you get your draw in and uh, your coupon in every week without fail number 22 so far 19 31 16 43 and 22 as Marianne called these super numbers, 479, 126, 479, 12 and 6. And our sixth number down tonight is number 17. Two to come, our supplementaries. Actually, we had four winners in super last yes. week, which was great. You make a lot of people happy, don't you? Oh, isn't that lovely? 29, our first supplementary down. It That's the way it is. We'd like to make you happy. We can only make you happy if you make sure you get your entry in in plenty That's of time. That's right. You've got to do that. You've got to do that. And of course, there's midweek draws as well. Here's our second sup, number 39. 19, 31, 16, 43, 22, 17, two sups, 39, 29. Hope you had success. From John and Marianne, have a nice week. See you soon. Good night. Why buy a turkey? Now you can afford the Xerox alternative. Small copiers and faxes at small prices. You're about to see what happens when you use new Omo with active oxygen. Whiter whites and brighter colours. The winner is... New Omo with active oxygen. There are mechanics. And there are mechanics. Just as there are oils. And there's Castrol GTX2. Castrol are the oil specialists. So unless it's Castrol GTX2, oils ain't oils. When we're investing people's money, we treat it as our own. Investments, rollovers, loans. I mean, Ida Blue, if the, you, don't, you look around, you don't see high flies. Health and general insurance, superannuation, financial advice. The first thing that we look at is protection of people's money. Of course we want to earn money, and we want to handle money well. We want more than that. Travel. Wills and estate planning, retirement care. We want to give as well as to get back. We're conservative in our approach. Smile's very important. But at the same time, we've, our returns are excellent. We're not a bank. And yet it provides a lot of the same services as a bank. We're not a building society. We listen and we follow through. We're not an insurance company. I think we've proven that we can be trusted. We are IOOF, which is better than all of those put together. Come in and see us. Come in and see us. If reward for effort is what you want, reward for effort is what you get from IOOF Australia. Contact your advisor or IOOF branch now. It's a turkey. Why buy a turkey? Now you can afford the Xerox alternative. Small copiers and faxes at small prices. She was beautiful and adventurous. Let her rip. But her journey to the top of the world was about to plunge her into the depths of hell. Run! A madman wanted her. This guy's killed before. Another man loved her. Sarah! But one was determined to save her. Let her go or die! Kirsty Alley. Tom Berenger. You slow me down, Sarah gets killed. I'll kill you. And Sidney Poitier star in a thrilling adventure. Oh! A heart-stopping chase. Oh! Deadly Pursuit, 8.30 Sunday on 7. If you may have just joined us, it's half time here at Carrara. Peter Dacos has booted six straight out of Collingwood's 11-672, leading Brisbane to...